In this video, we're headed to the Danchuk Tri-5 Nationals in Bowling Green, Kentucky. It's one of my favorite events of the year because there's drag racing, there's car show, there's a big swap meet, and there are always a ton of historic cars here on the property. Let's go check them out. The first thing that I saw when I walked into the swap meet was this 55 Chevrolet station wagon. Now they had everything open, all the doors, the hoods open, and look what's under this hood. This is a 409 engine which was really a pretty common engine swap back in the day. Back before regular big block Chevys became very common, these 348s and 409s were the thing to do. This one looks to be untouched for lots of years. You can see right there, it's got the X. That means it's a 409 block. This is a really, just like a time capsule. You can see this thing has been stored away in a barn somewhere, or in a garage somewhere. It's got the dust on it still and it's just a really neat piece. You can see the body is very solid. If you look at the interior, that's what's really cool to me is the interior is also from the same generation as that 409 engine. You can see it's got uh, vintage bucket seats like out of a 62 or three Impala. It's got custom upholstery on the door panels. You can see those buttons and the diamond stitching. I mean, this was a pretty nice car back in the day. You can see it's got a custom console that goes all the way to the back seat. I mean, there's a lot of cool details here that just needs to be cleaned up. Now, the asking price on this car was $29,500, but when you look at the condition, even though it's dirty, when you look at the condition, this is an excellent car. You could do some very small things and make this a spectacular car. I saw later on that it had sold written on the for sale sign. So somebody came in there, probably made a, decent offer and went home with a really cool new project. Now here's a pretty wild one I spotted in the show car area. This is a 57 Chevrolet Bel Air convertible. Pretty highly desirable car, but you can see that this car has been customized back in the day. So just from my best guess, this looks like maybe a late 70s or early 80s custom. You can see it's got sort of a candy gold finish. It's got the tooth grill. It's got tons of chrome everywhere you can see even here in the radiator support and all that, there's lots of chrome. But this car, it still shines, it still looks like it's a fresh build, but I know that there's some history here. So we look at in the engine bay, even the radiator, the aluminum radiator's got a polished top. It's got chrome literally everywhere inside of here. The inner fenders, every piece of this thing is either polished or chrome. You can see they've also got a custom mirror-like panel underneath the hood. It is just, a real showpiece from back in the day. The next car is something I saw in the drag racing pits and in the swap meet, and it is an incredible survivor. Look at the wild chop top on this 1955 Chevrolet sedan delivery. I mean, this was a big project to chop the top on something like this, but look at the rest of the car. I mean, it's got a flip forward fiberglass front end. The engine is set way back into the firewall. You can see that they've cut that firewall way out and they've actually put the engine up under the cowl it's got a custom scoop that cuts into the windshield, blue plexiglass. I mean, this thing is absolutely killer. You can see those rear wheel wells have been radiused out. It's got slicks and slotted mags. I mean, this car has wow factor. The stance is cool. The chop top is crazy, but look inside of it. You can see the blue glow from that Lexan or plexiglass. You can also see that there's no enclosure for the engine. It's just right there. And it's actually a pretty solid car. I mean, you don't see a whole lot of rust here. You see a little bit bubbling up around the seam at the rear window area. You see a little bit at the drip rail. But I mean, this is a very nicely preserved car considering that people kind of hacked on these things back in the day. They weren't exactly pristine show cars. But speaking of show cars, look at this. Chrome plated steering box, chrome plated axle, chrome on the radius rods, chrome on everything under the front suspension. So this was a pretty high end car back in the day. And you can see now it's got a small block in it with Moroso gold anodized valve covers. It's got a tunnel ram and two fours. You know, this is a pretty period correct setup for the 1970s. Now, what I found out later was this car was around way before the 1970s. This thing was originally built in the 60s and it was drag raced in several different configurations. First, it was obviously unchopped. It was just the standard roof height. And then it just progressed from there. You can see the different paint jobs. This guy's collected a lot of pictures and information on this car, which is awesome because 
just look at some of these pictures, like the one with the Corvette towing this thing. I mean, that doesn't happen anymore. That was something that was strictly 1960s, and this thing was a show-stopping combination back in the day. Here's another one I saw in the pits. This is the Badman 55 Chevrolet. If you're familiar with vintage model cars, you'll recognize the paint scheme. Even though the model car was actually a two-door hardtop and this is a two-door sedan, this still has the look nailed down perfectly. It's got the diagonal satin black stripes with the 396 lettering, the red Lexan windows, and it has the perfect gasser stance. And you'll also notice it's got a set of magnesium Halibrand wheels on the back. This thing is really cool. So in my coverage last year, I showed you guys the original two-lane blacktop 55 Chevrolet, the real deal. Well, the same guy actually owns this car. This is a 56 Chevrolet sedan delivery. And look at those big mirrors. That's a little bit goofy, but there's a reason they're there. You notice the lettering on the back. This is actually a car from another movie called Hollywood Nights. Now, this thing is restored perfectly. It's got all the details that it had in the movie. Now, I'm unsure whether or not this is a tribute car or the real deal, but either way, it perfectly represents that classic 56 that was in that movie. Every year at the Tri-5 Nationals, there's a huge gathering of junior stock cars. Now, these cars were really, really popular in the late 60s, and that's because junior stock eliminator, that basically meant the lower levels of the stock eliminator class. Super stock was the big guys. Junior stock was a slower car but a much more competitive field and you'll see a lot of cars like this 57 Chevrolet sedan delivery those cars were at an advantage because of the engine combination and the weight of the car they could actually run in a lesser class which would be more competitive and you know these cars were really really neat they had lots of cool tricks on them back in the day and it was very popular to run a station wagon a sedan delivery a four-door sedan, even four-door hardtops were pretty conventional in the junior stock ranks. You really didn't see that many two-door cars in the day. So this event draws a huge crowd of restored and original junior stock cars, and we're walking through the pits right now. There was a great collection of cars, lots of cool sedan deliveries, and here's a car that I actually featured in a video a couple of months ago from Bowling Green. This is the Chambers Chomper a 57 Bel Air two-door hardtop. This is the real deal, and he actually went out there and raced this car. Other fan favorites include the Hydrophobia car, another awesome sedan delivery, and this car was pretty impressive. I hadn't seen it run before. I love the patina on this car. The lettering is cool, and it sounded pretty healthy, and you can see under the hood, this one's got a little bit more modern stuff. This doesn't have a Carter carburetor. It's got a Holly on it. It's got a couple of modern details, but it still looks the part on the outside. And then sitting next to it is a beautifully restored 57 two-door post. It's got two fours on it. Again, a little bit upgraded from the old school stuff. Uh, as we make our way down, a 55 sedan delivery. And then we got a 57 two-door wagon with a nice crowd around it. And then a very famous car, the Carrot Cart. Now this one is beautifully preserved and runs hard. And here's another one from back in the day. If you look up old pictures from these junior stock ranks, you'll see pictures of this car with that crazy lettering. It kind of messes your eyes up. This is a nice tribute to that car. Now here's a really nicely preserved car. This is not a restored car. This is the real deal. 57 Chevrolet Bel Air four-door hardtop. And this is legit. This thing raced back in the day in O stock. That's one of the lower classes. You can see it raced at Atco. This car is so cool. You can see that paint crackling. You can see a little bit of age on the chrome. I mean, it's got steel wheels. It doesn't have anything fancy. You see those white headers poking out of the fender wells. I mean, this is what drag cars looked like in the late 60s. Sitting next to it is a tribute car, but it is done exactly like it was back in the day. And you can see a nice board that has lots of old pictures of the car and other cars that this gentleman raced. This is the Wheatley Brothers Heartbreaker 2. Now again, it's a tribute car, 
but it's very nicely done and he races it pretty hard. Now this car is not a tribute car. This is the real deal, but you can see that it's been restored. It's a very nicely built car, but this thing has real history. This is a 1968 race winner. This car is a really cool piece and it's owned by John Barkley. He's an old school magazine guy and he's still out there beating on this car. Although I did hear that he sold it at this event. At the end of the line here is the Tokyo Rose. This is another famous car. This one, look how slick that paint is, by the way. This is a 1956 sedan delivery, and it's got tons of lettering, tons of sign painting on there, but it's got steel wheels. You don't see anything real flashy as far as the undercarriage or anything like that, but this is a pretty iconic car. And again, he goes out there and runs this thing hard. Here we go back to the swap meet, and there was a really cool 55 Chevrolet Custom. Now look at those headlights, look at those split bumpers, the crazy grill, little hood scoop. I mean, they've done a tremendous amount of work as far as the metal work on this car. And you can see they're asking $29,500, actually the same price as that 409 station wagon. But look at the work on this car, shaved door handles. You can see they left the trim holes for the Bel Air or 210 trim. Those tail lights, I mean, there is so much work that has been done here and it looks like it's been done back in the day. It almost looks like maybe that's some old primer that's on there that's been on there for who knows how long. It's got some chrome wheels that are showing some age, but I mean, this thing is so cool. And look at that. I can't really see much in there, but look at that striped interior. This thing is all kinds of 1960s cool. And, you know, again, with just a little bit of work, it could be something truly spectacular. So. $29,000, still kind of a lot of money for a project, but you could have the only one of its kind with something like this. Continuing my walk through the car corral and swap meet, I found a really cool looking gasser. Now you can see it's got a Bel Air emblem, but no trim on the side. And looking inside, it's got a roll bar in there. That's pretty serious. And this thing's got a cool color combination. I mean, the paint's flaking off of it a little bit, but look at that stance. That thing is way up in the air. And we're going to take a closer look at it because this does not have a straight axle. This is actually a stock front suspension with a crazy front spindle. Look at this spindle design. Now, I don't know how much I like that. I don't know that I would enjoy going fast with a spindle like that. Uh, maybe people did back in the day, but that looks a little sketchy. But it does produce a really cool looking stance and, uh, you know, a good look overall. It's got cool wheels. Neat looking car, It'll be a really cool project. As we look inside, you can see whoever built this thing back in the day set the engine way back and they built this little enclosure to go around it. It's got a little console thing to rise the shifter up where it needs to be. It's got a little roll bar in it, just like a little four point bar. And look at those little plastic seats. I don't know what those came out of, but they look cool. It just kind of adds to the personality of this old school car. Sitting with that 55 is a cool tire and wheel combination, and I thought the price was fair, 600 bucks. And these are some really cool looking drag mags with a set of BFG radial redline tires on there. I mean, the tires alone would be well over $1,000. So that was a pretty good buy right there. Here's another 55 gasser. This time the wheel wells have not been radiused out. You can see it sits up real high. It's got drag mags and some cool m &H slicks on it. Looks like a pretty solid body. Maybe somebody's patched on it a little bit and tried to match the patina, but look at that. That is a crusty front tire. And you can see this one has an engine in it. It's still got fender well headers and it's got a pretty cool look to it, but it's obviously a project. Check out all the Dover Drag Strip Reunion stickers on the quarter window of this 55 Chevrolet 150. Now this car is stripped down. This is exactly what you would have wanted to drag race back in the day. It was the lightest weight option and you can see this car is pretty slick, but it does have some old school speed parts. You can see it's got an Impala steering wheel. It's got a uh, tack on the steering column. It's got some Raider wheels on it, and it's just got the perfect 1960s look. All right, it's impossible to choose a favorite out of 2,500 plus Tri-5s at this event, but this one is pretty high on my list. Now, the reason why is because this 55 Chevrolet two-door post, it has a 409 under the hood. And I just, I love it. I love 409 engines and especially love them when they're in 55 Chevrolets. And check out the factory type valve covers, the factory air cleaner for a 340 horse. I mean, this is just so cool. This is what somebody would have done in the mid 60s. 
And you can see this car's got some cool patina. It's not completely rotted out or anything. It's just aged. It's got Krager wheels on it. It's got pie crust slicks on the back, red windows. I mean, it's just too cool. And he came all the way from Nebraska. And when I was talking to him, he was familiar with the channel. So I hope that he gets to see the little feature on his car. It's such a cool piece. And he went out there and raced this thing. The car runs really well. Sounds like that 409's treating him pretty well. And if we look inside, you can see it's got Delray interior. The only things that he's touched is the Don Garlitz tack on the steering column. It's got an aftermarket steering wheel from back in the day. Stuart Warner gauge is down under the dash. It's got a B&M shifter, you know, just some little stuff, nothing real major in here. Otherwise, that original Delray interior looks pretty good in this old school 55. So that pretty much covers it for my favorite finds at the Dan Truck Tri-5 Nationals. I'm gonna send you off with some drag racing action. They had a Thursday night bracket race, which was very well attended. There was 44 cars that entered that bracket race and they all had a great time. I enjoyed watching it under the lights. It definitely cooled things off because it was a hot weekend. So enjoy this action. We'll see you soon.